Good afternoon. It is uh, March 30th, Monday. It's uh, 1.15 in the afternoon. Uh, and today I'm going to do another supine practice with you. And uh, we'll just start, uh, you can either be sitting up or you can be on your back. And um, what you need for this practice is just a clear space. So if you have a yoga mat, get a yoga mat out and get set up. But if you don't, just clear the furniture away so you have plenty of room from side to side. And one thing you might want would be perhaps a little folded up beach towel or blanket. I'm actually going to get a, a blanket for myself. Uh, and you want this, you want something um, uh, kind of thin. So this is pretty thin. I'm just going to put it uh, under my head and shoulders because um, I have a little bit of forward leaning and I want to, I want to try and open that up and flatten it out, but also support my body where it is. So just come to sitting. See if you can find those sits bones. Sit up nice and tall. Bringing your hands to Anjali Mudra. Inhaling as the arms come down and up. And exhaling back to the heart center two more times. And once more. And then go ahead and make your way onto your back. Um, and the first thing, just get comfortable, relax the feet, relax, relax the shoulders. Now, if this makes your uh, low back hurt, you can bend your knees like this. That will take the strain off of the back. Or you can keep the knees straight if, it, if it's not painful to do so. And on your next inhale, float both arms up and over. Bring the tips of the fingers towards the wall behind you and then exhaling back. And inhaling the arms up and over and exhale back. And go one more time like this. Inhale and exhale. And then float your arms out to not quite a T position. Bring the hands down just a little bit. Roll the palms down towards the floor. Bend your knees. And then lift one knee and then the other into the chest. We're going to do a twisting flow. So bring your left knee down to the floor. Roll onto the left hip. Stack the right knee on top. There's the twist. And then lift the right knee. Bring the left knee when it has to. Float that right knee onto the floor. Stack the left knee on top. There's that twist. Lifting the left leg. It's almost like you're, like you're cartwheeling your knees into the air. And I love this twist uh, because it works that core strength. You get a twist out of it and a hip opener out of it, right? There's the hip opener and there's the twist. And you're working that core strength as you go from side to side. And it just sort of feels good. It releases the muscles of the upper back, which is a place where we all tend to ga gather a lot of stress. And so just keep going. Now, the 
the next time both knees are over on your left side or you're facing your, uh, your screen so you can see me stay here, roll the palms up. So I'm on my left side. I'm going to take my right arm up and over, stacking shoulder on top of shoulder, hip on top of hip, and then slide this right, arm, right hand over the left arm, over the collarbone, reach out, release into the earth, breathe here. Do that two more times, inhaling the right arm up and over, stacking shoulder on top of shoulder, hips on top of hips. And as you exhale, slide that right hand over the left, over the collarbone, lengthen the spine, release into the twist and breathe here. And go one more time, inhaling the right arm up and over. Exhale, slide open into the twist. Release here and breathe. Roll the palms down, bring the knees in and roll onto your back. And then bring your right knee and then the left knee over to your right side. Take a few breaths here, releasing into the twist. Roll the palms up towards the ceiling. We're just going to do that, um, that little flow on the other side. So bringing the left arm up and over, stacking shoulder on top of shoulder, hip on top of hip. And then go ahead and slide the left hand over the right, across the collarbone, releasing into the twist. And again, inhaling the left arm up and over, step shoulder on top of shoulder, hip on top of hip, and as you exhale, slide the left hand across the right, opening into the twist. One more time, inhaling up and over. One more time, exhaling. Coming into that twist and just breathe here. And then roll the palms down to the floor, draw the knees in, come back onto your back and lower one foot and then the other onto your mat. Take a few breaths here. Just gently rock the knees from side to side. So this is a really gentle, small rocking of the knees. You don't have to, uh, you don't want, so what you don't want to do is you don't want to like do this, where you're just letting the knees pull and jerk on the low back here. You just want this nice, easy control where you're engaging the bandhas to control where your hips are in relation to your knees, right? So uh, you want to feel the muscles engage because, you know, there's this idea that yoga is all about stretching and that is part of it, but it's also about strength. It's really about balance in the body. Now bring that rocking to a close and bring your hands down to the side and uh, as you inhale, bring the right knee in, flex the toes towards the head, press the foot up to the ceiling, and then bend the knees and float the foot down. And then bring the left knee in, so the toes are flexed towards, uh, down this way, your, so your toe is not pointed, it's flat, the foot is flexed, and then bend the knee and float it down. So keep doing that. And the reason for the flexed foot here is that it tightens the quadriceps on the front here. It extends the hamstrings here. And, um, and we want to do that in the body because that's going to make our knees healthier. So if you have knee pain, this is a great way to work into that knee joint 
strengthening the quadriceps on the front of the thigh, lengthening the hamstrings on the back. Just keep going. Make sure you're not holding your breath. You can inhale here and exhale here. Inhale, knee comes in and straightens. Exhale, knee bends, foot back to the mat. Go one more time, each leg. And then bring that to a close. Take a minute to release. And then this gentle rocking from side to side. And take a deep breath here. Now we're going to add the arms to that leg flow. So bring the rocking to a close. Bend your right knee as the right leg straightens. So the left arm comes up and over. And then bend the right knee, float the right foot, left arm down to the floor. Bend the left knee into the chest. And the right arm comes up and over. Bend the knee, the right knee. I'm sorry, left knee, bring your right arm down to the side. So right leg, left arm, and back to ground. Left leg, right arm, and back to ground. Inhaling as the leg straightens, arm comes up. Exhaling, knee bends, arm and foot come down. Just keep going through this as if you're swimming a very lazy backstroke. Remember, it's opposing arms and legs. So if you get confused, just stop for a minute and start back up. One more time, left arm, right leg, and then bring it to a close, breathing here. So go ahead and take your hands and just place them on the belly here. Let the fingers be wide and just sort of give your belly a little, um, a little massage. Go one way in big circles, and then reverse, going the other way in big circles. And then bring that to a close and just stay here. So we're gonna do just a little pranayama practice. So I want you to inhale through the nose, let the belly the ribs and up here expand and then exhale, the air comes back out the same way. So inhale here, belly, ribs up to the collarbone, exhale back down. So keep going like that, just focus on the breath. And let the belly get big with the inhale and feel it, feel it recede on the exhale. So we call it belly breath, even though we know you're not really, the belly doesn't breathe, but what happens is the, the respiratory diaphragm, which is here, when you inhale, it drops down into the belly. And if you let your belly expand, the lungs can expand. And then exhaling back. Keep going, take a deep, deep inhale. Take a slow, relaxed exhale. And one more breath. And then bring that to a close and then bend the right knee into the chest and lace your fingers and bring the fingers over the shin. Now, if this is not available to you, you can bring it behind the thigh like this. So either behind the thigh here 
or on top of the shin, and then just lift the left leg, flex the foot, reach through the heel, and slowly lower the left leg all the way down to the mat. Reach through that left heel, hug the right knee, and breathe here. Try to let the back of the neck be long. So if your chin has hyperextended towards the wall behind you like that, just pick your head up and bring that bony occiput back down onto the mat. Breathe in here. Go ahead and bend the left knee into the chest. Switch your hands over to the left shin or under the left thigh. Straighten your right leg straight up to the ceiling, reach through the heel, and as you exhale, slowly lower that right leg all the way down to the mat. Keep the foot flexed and the leg strong, and you're breathing here. Bending the right knee into the chest, switching your hands to the right shin, straightening the left leg, lengthening through the spine, and slowly releasing all the way down to the mat. And breathe in here. Bending the left knee, hands to left shin, straighten right leg. Release the leg down, keep it active, and breathe here. Now, this time, bend the right knee into the chest, switch your hands to the right shin, straighten the left leg, lower the left leg down. And then bring your left hand down by your left side and you're gonna open this right knee out to the right side. Try to keep this left hip flat on the mat so there's a tendency to roll like this. So bring that hip back and just open uh, the right leg just as much as you can. So if it doesn't come very far, that's okay. Bring the right leg back up and open it back up. Right knee out to the right and back to center and one more time right knee out to the right and back to center lace your fingers over that right shin hug the knee in and then bend the left knee into the chest switch your hands to the left shin straighten the right leg and slowly lower that right leg all the way down to the mat stay here Keeping your left hand on your left shin, the right hand just comes down to the right side. Now, um, this time, engage the root lock and the pit of the belly. That will help you keep the sacrum or the low back flat on the mat as you open that left knee out to the left side and then bring it back to center. Two more times, engage the bandhas, open the left knee out to the left side, reach through the right leg and back to center. And one more time, open out to the side. And one more time, back to center. Lace your fingers over the left shin, hug that knee in. And then go ahead and bend the right knee into the chest. Switch your hands to the right shin straighten that left leg, lower the left leg all the way down to the mat. So now we're going to do a twist. So take this left hand to the outside of the right knee. Take your right hand down by your right hip and you're going to roll onto the left hip, twisting at the waist, lengthening the spine. Let the weight of the left hand gently draw the right closer to the mat. It's a gentle twist and then come back onto your back, and then we're just going to go right back over onto the left hip. Right leg comes across the body, twisting at the waist, and back to center, and one more time, rolling onto the left hip. Right leg comes across the body, twisting at the waist, and then rolling back onto your back, 
lacing your fingers over the right shin, hugging the knee in. Bend the left knee into the chest. Switch your hands to the left shin, straighten that right leg straight up. And as you exhale, slowly lower the right leg all the way down to the yoga mat. Taking your right hand and walking it to the outside of the left knee, left hand down by your side, rolling onto the right hip, bringing the knee across the body, and coming back onto your back. Two more times. Left knee comes across the body onto the right side. It's a twist at the waist and back onto your back. And one more time, across the body, and back onto your back. And then lacing your fingers over the left shin, hugging the knee in, bend the right knee in, and then bring the palms of your hands onto your kneecaps here and we're going to make big circles, both knees going the same way, like you're stirring a big pot of stew. And you can allow the low back to sort of rock and roll a little bit on the mat here, but just make sure you're in control of that, that the navel center is drawing in and releasing uh, to control this rock and roll. And then reverse, going back the other way. And then just bring that to a close and go ahead and flex your feet and press them up to the ceiling. And you can either bring your hands back here behind you or down here. So um, here's where it's easier if you've been practicing for a while and these hamstrings are long. This is actually a fairly easy pose. If your hamstrings are tight and your legs are way down here, then your bondas are working really hard and it's much more difficult. So we're not gonna stay here, but just another breath or two. And then bend the knees back into the chest and this time hug both knees in and just rock from side to side, from left to right, from right to left, uh, massaging the low back into the yoga mat. Mm -hmm. and then go ahead and release one foot and then the other and then straighten one leg and then the other so that you I can see I've slid up way down on my mat so that you come into Shavasana now if it hurts your, your low back uh, to be on the floor with your legs out which is very very common uh, for people uh, get a, a, either a bolster, so this is a yoga bolster, but if you don't have this, if you have a sofa cushion, if you have some sort of fairly firm um, pillow, or if you have a couple of beach towels folded and stacked up one on top of the other, I suggest you get that. And you want to place this underneath the thighs, not under the buttocks, not under the low back, but come down onto your mat, bend your knees, and slide that bolster up to the edge of the buttocks, and then release one leg and then the other. What this does is it uh, creates a little bit of a posterior tilt of the pelvis. So the pelvis tilts up this way instead of an anterior tilt or a sway back, uh, and that releases tension you have in your low back. And then, uh, so this is too low now. So then just bring your hands down, roll the palms up. And then we're gonna do Shavasana, which is corpse pose. So release into the earth. Come back to that three parts breath we practiced in the middle of the practice. Let the belly rise as your lungs fill on the inhale. And let the belly recede as the lungs empty on the exhale. You can allow the mind to follow the breath. I breathe in, I breathe out. 
will be here for a few minutes. And then I'll close the class. So go ahead and wiggle your fingers and your toes and then move and stretch as your body calls you to move and stretch. And then bend one knee and then the other and bring the knees into the chest. If you have a bolster or blanket under your um, legs, you can just slide that out. And then you just want to roll onto your right side in the fetal position and you can take this um this right arm and just bring it under your head for a cushion and just stay here for a moment or two we took all that time to get relaxed to equilibrate our central nervous system and we want to keep that we want to keep that balance and then when you're ready, you can use your arms to gently press yourself up to a comfortable seated position. And then sitting nice and tall here, bring your hands to the heart. Thank you for joining me at Yoga Gym. I'm Liz Campbell. Namaste.